about you and whether you're on weight, you look in fantastic shape, Ryan. I mean, I don't, I don't listen to these fucking motherfuckers anymore, dude. Oh my god, that's not Christian. Hater, dude. Look at me, motherfucker. I, I passed all the drug tests. You guys are fuck. You guys hate the truth. That's the fact. I hate the truth. Look, it, it's right in front of your face. How the fuck I'm gonna miss weight? Motherfuckers are bums, bro. Bums. Ryan, aside from that, you know, apologize for the language as well. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm, I'm a little right. turned up, Ryan. That, that is turned up. Ryan, obviously, look, there's been a lot going on with you in the last couple of weeks. Uh, some people say, is Ryan okay? What, what is Ryan going nah, through? I, Ultimately, I'll tell you're good to go. Now, RG has been mentally evaluated by every physician, therapist. I've had to jump through hurdles to prove I don't do drugs. I pass every test. I'm just a motherfucker on a mission. If y'all if y'all seen what I seen, y'all would not be the same, but it, it don't matter. I'm still here. I'm straight. You know, I got to admit, uh, it took some time. Uh, but I really don't think nothing's wrong with Ryan Garcia. I mean, maybe this is who he always was. You know, kind of how like Anthony Joshua had that little bit of mental break um, after he lost to uh, Andrew Ruiz and then he lost to uh, Usyk. Had that little mental breakdown. You know, he was being a company man. Maybe that's what's going on with Ryan Garcia. I'm T Street Controversy with 5 View 360. I apologize for the uh, lack of content the last few days. Uh, getting over the flu. Actually, yes, he... Uh, Springtime flu, which is the worst. It is April 17th, um, 6, 2024, 6 23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on T Street Controversy with 5 View 360. First, today they had their media workout. Yesterday they had their uh, face off at, uh, where was this at? Where was this at? Where was this at? You know, here's the thing. I mean, uh, do you, okay, don't get me wrong. I like the fight. I do. I really do like the fight. Uh, Ryan Garcia's antics and, you know, the way the, the way the Javante Dang Davis fight went down, I got to admit, uh, I'm not saying that he's not going to show up to fight on Saturday night. I just don't have the confidence in him. But another thing we got to talk about is we got to talk about these god awful ticket sales. You know, they really shit the bed by um, making these tickets as expensive as they are. For example, we are now three days away from the fight and they haven't come down on the tickets. Look, $7,300, nearly $7,400 is the most expensive ticket, but that's not even, you know, to get in the building, you're paying 160 bucks. Look, 243. It's the 17th. The fight is on the 20th. But look, it gets even more sinister as we move in. Look how many of these tickets are still available. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, obviously, I expect for these ticket prices to come down some. But look at that. Look at that. And I got to admit, Devin Haney, you know, he's doing the right moves to get there to be the big time star. You know, him and his father has been working on him being, but he's just not there yet. And Ryan Garcia, since losing to Tank Davis, I do admit his buzz seemed to have gone down. You know, yeah, he's got he still got a little bit of buzz on the social media influencer side. But for the most part, people are not really giving a fuck about Ryan Garcia like that. I said this years ago. When it came to um, uh, his millions of Instagram followers, how does that transition to ticket sales when they're teenagers? Teenagers don't be having no fucking money these days. And let alone, they don't have no $7,000 or in this day and age, $300, $300 to get into the building. So we're going to be monitoring this um, during the weigh-in. We're going to be here live streaming the weigh-in and the uh, uh, final press conference for those who are interested here on the channel. And um, we're going to be monitoring these ticket sales for the rest of the week to see really how well they're going to move. And by the way, this shitty undercard doesn't help either. It's a shitty undercard. John Ramirez versus David Jimenez, WBA flyweight title. Arnold Barboza Jr. versus Sean McComb. Bakhtir Malakzadiev versus Pierre. Who? Who? UFC 300 just was stacked. PBC on uh, Amazon, Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fendor was, a, was an awesome undercard. But this right here just is just, 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 just ill. 
But let's go listen to Devin Haney. I'm surprised now that he's backtracking to say that he now wants to pursue um, being undisputed at 140 pounds, and it's politically possible for him. So let's listen to his uh, interview here that he did. did the, this uh, press conference, not press conference, media workout just ended not too long ago. Let's go listen to what he has to say. Had some down years. Right now, Derek James is kind of on a down tilt, right? Errol Spence lost. Jermel Charlo lost. Anthony Joshua stayed. By the way, I, I predicted that for Derek James. I think he was stretched too thin. Um, for, and, and maybe that's the reason why Errol Spence was mad because, you know, all them fighters he was training all in big fights back to back to back. From Ryan Garcia um, uh, to Jamel Charlo, Anthony Joshua, Errol Spence. You know, I think he just was stretched, stretched too thin personally. Overseas, so it's a big chance for Derek James to put himself back on the map in terms of top trainers. Ryan Garcia, don't way, listen I to no trainers. Devin Haney was coming because the swarm of people that were coming with him as well. Devin Haney is in the ring with us, the current WBC super lightweight champion. Devin? By the way, his face don't look as sucked in as it did um, when he was making weight for 135. And as you can see, he's cutting weight right now, given his attire. You are looking good, my man. Yes, sir. I feel great. Yeah. What's this build-up been like for you? We, we've tried to kind of work out what's it been like for us, seeing Ryan's tweets, Ryan's Insta stories. What's it been like for you? You're the guy that's fighting him. Um, it's, been a, it's been a different build-up uh, than we were all used to. Uh, it might be the first time we ever seen this type of build-up, but it's boxing. What can you do? It's certainly been stranger than any build-up I've ever seen. I mean, this week alone, we're only on Wednesday, and already you guys had a scuffle at the top of the Empire State Building, and for some reason, we're not allowed to throw the first pitch out at, uh, at City Field uh, in Chase Stadium. How much is that has that gotten you? How much of that has bothered you, gotten under your skin, if anything? I mean, none of it. None of it uh, has gotten under my skin at the end of the day. I'm a true professional. When I get in that ring, I'm going to do my job no matter what, no matter how I feel or what, what he says. So, uh, he can say what he want to say. Um, on, on Saturday night, I let my hands do the talk. You did give him a little bit of slap there the other day. What was he had it now? coming? He had it coming. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's been wanting to slap him, so I, I finally was able to do it for everybody else. Devin, this is the type of fight where it could be a fancy match between two fighters with great jabs. I, I always say it and praise that you have one of the best jabs in boxing, yep. if not the best. Ryan Garcia has a fast jab, really powerful jab. This is the type of fight where if it does become a fancy match. Do you think you can win that fancy match with a jab only? Yeah, I mean, Ryan, Ryan has, has speed, but I have the timing. So, um, you know, I just want to show how, how I'm levels above this guy. This guy is an average fighter with a name. You know, and, and, and that's just reality. At the end of the day, I'm a proven fighter, a uh, proven champion. Uh, I, you know, I tested against the, the best fighters in the world, and I'm here for a reason, and it will show. Was you scared throughout the build-up that this fight might not happen? Was there any time you was thinking, one second, this fight could be called off? Um, in the very beginning, but then after a while, I knew that, you know, that, that this thing was going to go no matter what he did, no matter what antics he was going to do, uh, the fight was going to happen. And that's been, I've been ha tunnel vision. No matter who it was, this fight is bigger than, than Ryan Garcia for me. You know, it's, I'm, it's me versus greatness, me versus myself. And, you know, I'm here for a reason of the, the, the years and years of hard work and discipline and, and, and dedication. So this is just another fight for me. This is just another fight to show, you know, everything that I've, that, 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 that I've, that I've, you know, worked on everything that I've did to get to this point will show. There's a, a lot of aggression right now coming out of Ryan to the point where he's talking about going after you right away from the opening bell. If that happens, what is your response going to be? I'll be ready. I'll run into something. Uh, to, I want him to come. Come on. Is that the kind of fight you want, a, a kind of a war in the middle of the ring? Tell him to come on. <laughs> I'll be waiting for him. That won't be hard to find. Devin, I've followed your career for so many years, and, and I look at this, and I look at all the cameras and all your accolades and what you've done so far. This is incredible what you've done so far in your career, and you're, you're only 25. Yes. It is, it is insane, isn't it? I mean, we, we was going running I mean, through I some of the names you I can only thank Allah, alhamdulillah, because it's all a dream come true for me. You know, I dreamed to be here one day, and now the time has finally come. So um, Allah is the greatest, you know. Allah is the greatest, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just so thankful. Um, He's, the, he's done this for me. And people were asking, we were talking about it, like, does Devin not like these kind of fight week responsibilities? My response was like, I think Devin's been kind of waiting for these opportunities because you kind of earned the accolades before some of the guys in and around your weight class did. You won the titles. You were jumping up in weight class, but you weren't getting the kind of coverage maybe that you deserve because that was like, this to me feels like stuff you've been waiting for for a long time. Yeah, no, it's been, it's, it's been a long time coming for me. 
Um, and, and now it's finally here. So, of course, I love I love everything. I love the build-up. I love all this. I lo- all this is part of it. This is what I signed up for. And I've seen the, 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 the champions do it before me, and I knew that one day I would be here one day. So the time has finally come. Why not? Why, I'm, why not embrace it? I love it. All right, so Friday comes around. You'll make 140? Come on now. <laughs> I, I, I'm setting have it up. I, I'm setting it up have there. Have I ever missed weight? No, you have. That's what okay. I'm setting up there. I'm a true professional. Even when I was killing myself to make 135, uh, I still was making the weight. 140 is much easier for me to make. Yeah, he was talking about moving up to 147 pounds. Um, by the way, this pay-per-view is $79.99 if you're buying through your cable or satellite provider or online without a the zone subscription. $69.99 if you do have the zone, but the zone is a shitty boxing platform. Uh and I hate to say it, but right now, go look at their schedule for the month of uh uh, uh April. And they're charging twenty seven dollars a month if you're buying monthly for that uh subscription plan. Um let's see here at 140 pounds. So you got Liam Paro Taking on Sabriel Matias in June. Tiafimo Lopez are still waiting on an opponent announcement for him, but there's rumors that he'll fight Steve Claggett. Hopefully that's not true. Eastside Cruz will likely fight Ismail Barroso, but we've seen that Devin Haney, you know, can bounce around from network to network. So I think Smart Money would say that him, that Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia winner, will fight the winner of Sabriel Matias, um, Liam Paro. I'll like that fight. And then Tia Fima Lopez, or they can go that route, go back over to ESPN, because I doubt Tia Fima will be coming back to the zone as a purse bit situation. They can go that route. But a more interesting uh, topic I want to talk about is the resume right now between Tank Davis. And my, mind you, I'm going to go ahead and say, both of these fighters got cocksuckers. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Like, just heavy supporters that masquerade as unbiased media or whatever you want to say. But, you know, cocksuckers, both of them, both sides, both of them. But to realistically, you know, and let's say non-biasedly talk about it, let's talk about the resumes. 31 and 0 with 15 KOs. This Zaire uh, Abu Duliev, uh fight his age pretty well. Yorkis Gamboa can't really count him. Now, I'm not going to count him for Tank Davis either. Jorge Linares, he was at the very last, 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 and he didn't stop him. Jojo Diaz, nice solid fight. Two fights with George Cambosos. Vasil Lomachenko, Regis Progray, and now Ryan Garcia. When you look at Tank, now let's put it, that's now, don't get me wrong. He's got Jose Pedraza, the first. Jose Pedraza is now a journeyman. Cuellar was a nice, solid win. Gamboa, I'm not going to count him for him either. He had one foot, one shoe. Leo Santa Cruz was the smaller fighter, but still he's got that scalp. Mario Barrios is, is, is a nice fight that aged well. Isak Cruz has aged well. Roller Romero, are you going to count him? So, to me, their resumes are not too far apart. And the fact that... Uh, um, Devin is, 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 is younger, is giving him the edge. Now, of course, it's no secret that Tank Davis is the pay-per-view star of the two. It's no secret that right now with the way things are looking with these pitiful, pathetic ticket sales here, which they fucked up by making them so expensive, it's no secret that this fight is probably not going to do very well on pay-per-view. I'll be, I'll be surprised if Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia does 300000 on pay-per-view. I'll be surprised. 300,000 pay-per-view buys. Ryan Garcia just is not that mover of needles that, you know, I think he is. I'm just not seeing the buzz for this fight, the fan appeal, the press conferences. You know, when he showed up on that cringe-ass horse, I'm just not seeing it. Ryan Garcia's resume, 24 and 1 with 20 KOs, only 25, I mean, only 25 years old himself. Oscar Duarte, Tank Davis. Let's go look at the beginning. Let's see what let's see what wins have really aged well for him. Really, only signature wins is Luke Campbell. Dunyo, okay, you can count that. Luke Campbell. Fortuna. Tank. Ain't nothing really there to call out, you know. But one thing about him is he's got a reputation for being a know-it-all. 
You know, you hear it, you know, from multiple trainers that he just don't listen. You've noticed it when he fought uh, Duarte. Um, Derek James is telling him, yo, stop doing the shoulder road. He said at the post-fight press conference, oh, I just kept doing it because, you know, whatever. I want to try something different. It's like your trainer stopped. Your trainer told you to stop doing it, dickhead. We're using some dickhead shit. And then let's not get started on his, on his Twitter. You know, the, the shenanigans he's been up to. But maybe, you know, maybe that's just him being free. Maybe that's just him selling. Who knows? Who knows? This is what uh, Bernard Hopkins had to say. It's not. Y'all think he's doing the art of war, acting like he's crazy, but they're going to go in there and whoop Devin Heaney's ass. See, he can box. He can fight. We can't take that away from him. He can fight. But it's just like his level of focus going into the fight has had, has fans concerned. However, his social media has been interesting, though. Let's, let's admit that. Listen in. What people put out there to the universe is not actually what they are and what they're doing behind closed doors. See, part of the technology, I can give you something that you think I'm giving you. Did you just call it the but in the same, but in the same, but in the same, but, but in the same token, I'm working my ass off at three or four in the morning. Where y'all thinking my gym time is five to eight, five to eight, or five to seven? See, again, this is all conversations that's going to be more tomorrow. But Saturday night. There are two guys that's going to go in that ring to have some experience from when they was young men. Now that they are grown men in a grown man sport called pro professional boxing, it starts now with me. It ain't no three and three and we break the tie because you cannot say that amateur commentating is pro commentating. So basically he's trying to say it's some art of the war. You know, um, the art of deception. You know, uh, uh, Devin Haney, uh, George Cambosos. This was pretty bizarre here. Nah, no means yes sometimes. Yeah, this guy, man. This guy. I mean, his social media has been entertaining. That's that's for sure. We can say that. I'm ready to destroy motherfuckers. Y'all weren't talking shit about Mike Tyson when he was like this. Y'all yes, we were. Him now, right? Okay then, so you're gonna respect me? I seen some shit I should have never seen. Yes, we were. We were like, yo, Mike Tyson, you know, fucking crazy ass. I remember I was a kid at the time. It's like, yeah, that guy's nuts. But yeah, what is this he's been talking about? He's been talking about some very controversial things. I'm not saying it's not true, or I don't believe, you know, most of it when it comes to Bohemian, Bohemian Grove and all that. But, you know, it's just been a little bit, you know, a little bit far fetched. Not far fetched. I'm just saying, I got some concerns. I mean, the kid can fight. We can't take that away from him. He can fight. He can fight. I just have concerns about him inside the ring and his level of focus. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. I'm T-Street Controversy with 5 360. We will be here tomorrow streaming the press conference. The final press conference should be interesting.